Hi, I'm Anthony O'Connor, I'm a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist, and today we're going to talk about a pretty controversial topic, the use of animal products in Chinese medicine. So this is a very divisive issue, and it's one that draws a lot of negative attention to Chinese herbal medicine. I would go so far as to say that it's possibly the first thing people think of when they hear Chinese herbal medicine. Their mind immediately goes to rhino horn and endangered animals. So this is a misconception that's both damaging and inaccurate. There's also a strange perception that the use of animal products is confined to Chinese medicine, but this absolutely isn't the case. Western medicine uses animal products in its production constantly for things like glucosamine, calcium, insulin, peptides, the list goes on. The blood of horseshoe crabs is an irreplaceable ingredient in drug and vaccine production. So every year pharmaceutical companies take half a million horseshoe crabs out of the sea, bleed them and then release them back into the wild, but unfortunately a lot of them don't survive this process. Sharks as well produce a special oil in their liver that is really commonly used in cosmetics and sunscreen, but again also used in vaccine production, and there are many other examples. I'm bringing these up so we can have an accurate comparison between Western medicine and Chinese medicine. So now, here is a list of animal products used by Chinese herbal medicine practitioners in Ireland and the UK. There are none. The use of animal products by herbalists is illegal. We only use plant substances. No animal products, not even any minerals. And it's not just animals that can become endangered, plants can as well, and that's why all practitioners in Ireland and the UK adhere to CITES. We do this so that the medicine we prescribe can be prescribed sustainably. So where does this idea of animal product use in Chinese medicine come from? Well, the first thing we need to understand is that there's a difference between the way Chinese medicine is practiced in China and the way Chinese medicine is practiced in the West. There's a lot of differences, but it can't be denied that in China, Chinese herbal medicine has a long tradition of animal product use. This goes right back to the Shennan Ben Cao Jing, the original herbal pharmacopoeia containing a range of animal products. Some ancient formulas do list animal products in their ingredients, but that doesn't mean they're prescribed. And that's due to a common and vital part of Chinese herbal medicine practice, substitutions. As I've said many times before, Chinese herbal medicine prescribes formulas not herbs. This is a large part of its strength. Formulas are infinitely malleable and can be infinitely personalized, whereas herbs are not. You can really just control dosage. Let me give you an example. I recently had a chronic asthmatic come to me for breathing related issues and I wanted to prescribe her a formula that contained a herb called gualo. But this patient is already prone to loose stools and gualo can make that worse, so it wouldn't be appropriate for her. So what I need to do is I need to find a substitute for that herb. When we look at the attributes of guado, we see that it's cold and sweet, that it transforms phlegm and directs turbid phlegm downwards. It enters the lungs, large intestine and stomach. Now there's no single herb I can think of that has all of these attributes. There's one that's pretty close called Ho Po, which has a lovely phlegm transforming and descending effect, but Ho Po is very hot in nature, whereas guado is very cold. So what I can do then is I can combine the Ho Po with a herb called Sang Bai Pi, which is very cold and works on the lungs. And now what we have is a combination of two herbs that within the formula have the same function as the original herb, Guolo, but none of its negative effects. And this is what herbalists do with every prescription, checking every herb, um, modifying and adjusting and substituting depending on what the patient needs. It's an absolutely fundamental part of herbal practice. In fact, I once talked to a doctor that used a three herb formula in which he replaced all three herbs, but claimed it was still the same formula because it had the same effect on the body. Now that's a pretty extreme example, but this is the way Chinese herbal medicine works. It's about the formula, not the individual herbs. So when we look at ancient formulas, we have to look at them in their accurate historical context. We have to understand the role the animal product is playing in the formula so we can substitute it effectively. So with all that said, let's take one example of animal product use. So let's go with the common one, rhino horn. Now rhinos are in massive decline and this is due to a large number of factors. Historically a lot of their decline can be linked to trophy hunting by Europeans. Contemporary times they're used for um, accessories and jewellery. Living in China. I never saw rhino horn used or even referred to. 
it's just completely commonly substituted for shui nu jia, which is a water buffalo horn, if you're using animal products within China. Over here in the West, we'll substitute it with plants like sheng di huang or ban lan gen. It's also not an aphrodisiac within Chinese medicine. Rhino horn is a very cooling yin tonic. Most aphrodisiacs in Chinese medicine will be very warming yang tonics. So almost exactly the opposite of the functions of rhino horn. As Eric Dinerstein, who's the former chief scientist with the World Wildlife Federation said, traditional Chinese medicine never has used rhinoceros horn as an aphrodisiac. This is a myth of the Western media and in some parts of Asia is viewed as a kind of anti-Chinese hysteria. And the crazy thing is it's been propagated so much in the media that in countries like Vietnam, even though they don't have a history of using it as an aphrodisiac, it's starting to actually be used as one now, just because they hear the idea of it as an aphrodisiac being repeated so often. So it goes without saying that no endangered species of any kind should ever be used in Chinese medicine. The whole principle of Chinese medicine is about harmonizing the human being within the natural environment. The idea of doing something during treatment that could contribute to the eradication of a species of any kind is absolutely abhorrent. That said, theoretically, if we were to allow the use of some non-endangered animal products within Chinese herbal medicine in, in Ireland and the UK, I think some of the first choices of product would surprise you. So for myself personally, the products I would really like to have access to are things like Dilong, which is earthworm, and it's used in some of the strongest pain relieving formulas. Muli, which is powdered oyster shell, has a huge range of different and very beneficial effects. Leeches are used in Chinese medicine for bleeding and clotting disorders the same way they are in Western medicine. Near my home, here in Ireland, there is a national park, and every year hundreds of deer are culled for ecological reasons. I personally wouldn't have an issue with using their antlers or a few other body parts in medicinal substances if I knew it could benefit my patients. These are not endangered creatures, and as long as the items are obtained without any undue suffering to the animal or any decline in numbers, I personally wouldn't be completely against their usage. Frankly, as somebody who eats meat, I think it would be hypocritical of me to be fine with eating a burger, but not fine with using some animal products in a substance that could help one of my patients. But that's just my personal opinion. And a lot of herbalists in both the West and in China will agree that you can get the same effect from herbal formulas that just use plants as ones that use animal products, but it might just take a little bit longer. And again, everything I've just said there is completely theoretical because right now, there is no animal product use in Ireland or the UK in terms of Chinese herbal medicine. We only use plant products. We adhere to CITES so that everything we do is sustainable. For formulas that have animal products as ingredients, we use substitutions. So right now, if you go to a Chinese herbalist, you can be sure that nothing you're getting contains animal products. You can't actually say the same thing if you take Western medicine or buy certain cosmetics. That's all for this week. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, please leave them down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.